at the start of gum disease. And what gingivitis literally means is an inflammation of the gums. Mm -hmm. And what you see when you brush your teeth or floss, or maybe not even that, you'll see some bleeding. Like I like to tell my patients, bleeding is not normal no matter what part of the body it's coming from. It's not normal. It's not acceptable. It's, it, but it's a reality. So we try to get people to have better oral hygiene habits. In fact, I read something interesting recently that flossing adds seven years to your life. I'm not really? sure it's true, but it wow. is very important. Um, so what you're trying to do is clean up the bacteria that accumulate and prevent um, this biofilm from settling in over your, your teeth. And if by cleaning your teeth properly, you're disrupting the settling of these germs and keeping them out of there. Well, what separates someone from not having swollen gums and someone else gets swollen gums? Is it well, how the biggest well you thing care is, for them? The, big, the biggest thing is your, your, how well you take care of them. Hmm. You know, secondly, there is definitely a genetic component. Uh, also, since teeth are part of your body, you know, your overall health. Stress. Diabetics, for instance typically have gum problems, especially yeah. when the diabetes is out of control. So again, it just shows clearly the relationship between what's going on in your body as well as what's going on in your mouth. So that's Can really important. Can you sometimes tell if someone's stressed out if you look and you get to doing this for so long? Well, we can, we can tell. I mean, I, I, go, I go into the assumption that every one of my adult patients is stressed. That's <laughs> a given. So with that as a starting point, there's already one sort of risk factor involved. So Taking that into account, we try to examine everything else more closely. We ask a pretty detailed medical history and a dental history to find out where people are coming from, where they're going, if they're willing to commit the time and effort to become healthier. Okay, so someone calls you, they're watching the show out there now, he's located on 9 Linden Street. Do we have this Stan's uh, number or website we can put up there? But anyway, someone's watching the show now and they say, you know something, I really haven't taken care of my... He seems like he knows what he's talking about. Someone's going to give you a call tomorrow. And they say, geez, I saw you uh, on uh, Tom Coletta's show. I'd like to come in. What would you do, the first thing you do to that person? You take extra? Oh, sure, the, sure. The, well, well, well if, somebody, if somebody comes in with a particular problem, is an emergency, for instance, which is an infection, a swelling, a broken tooth, we're going to deal with that emergency. But if someone comes in and says, you know, I haven't been to the dentist yeah. in five years. I don't know. I, I'm a little concerned. Yeah. I've heard about gum disease. I've been reading the newspaper. i got one tooth and a back that's aching, mm. those people are going to come in for what we would call a comprehensive initial evaluation or exam. Uh, typically, we're going to sit down face to face, find out what's going on, review their medical history, review their dental history. We're going to ask a lot of questions. Uh, typically, the, the nuts and bolts of the exam consists of a complete set of x-rays. We do that digitally. Uh, we do also photographs because we want to evaluate how their teeth look. And an easy way to do that today is with digital photography. We also uh, will examine uh, their gums and do measurements to see if they have gum disease. We'll check for cavities. We'll look over their, the rest of their mouth, their tongue and so forth. We'll do an oral cancer screening. We have other technology which, me which measures how uh, susceptible you are to getting cavities. Mm. So that appointment typically is at least an hour. So the first visit you come in, we're trying to get as much information as yeah, possible. History. And then, of course, you need a plan. And the plan we customize to everybody that comes in, depending on their desires, their, their condition, their budget, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not a cookie-cutter solution to everybody's problems, right. and there are different priorities for different people. Uh, some people say, you know what, I don't really care how my teeth look, but I want to have the healthiest gums. Mm -hmm. Other people say, you know what, Doc, I know my gums need to be healthy, but if I have a black tooth in the front of my mouth, you've got to fix that first. Yeah. So that's what we try to do. Okay, here's the state of the equipment. Believe me, this guy's top shelf. My uh, wife has switched over to him just recently because of just how incredible his equipment is. Because uh, she realized her dentist that she was going to was kind of living in the 1950s where, you know, he kind of tied a string to your tooth and slammed the door <laughs> to pull it out, okay? I'm exaggerating there, but he was kind of passe. But Stan has all the latest stuff, and this guy's... Uh, on top of everything. Matter of fact, this is what I want to get into. It's kind of a vain thing. My day job is a little bit connected to you with 
appearances because I get people ready for jobs. I find them jobs. I teach them how to dress, how to write a resume, how to act during, a, during an interview. And what you do is a little bit similar. Teeth whitening has become really big in the last few years. Um, the, the boom in cosmetic dentistry really started in the 80s um, and, and, and really propelled into the 90s as people be, were able to whiten their teeth uh, relatively inexpensively. In fact, um, in our practice, we, we, we almost uh, give whitening away. We do a $99 special for yeah. all new patients. Um, it's sort of the most bang for your buck. Um, works very well in most cases. Uh, we're honest with people. If your teeth are brown, yeah. you're not going to get to that color. Yeah. You're going to have to be, you know, consider other options. But, um, you know, teeth whitening allows you to freshen up your smile. You know, people over, as we do get older, our teeth do discolor. That's a fact. Um, but we can whiten them up, and, and that's sort of the easiest way. You know, a lot of other methods, you know, we do a lot of uh, porcelain veneers, which are basically uh, coverings for the enamel to straighten teeth, eliminate spaces, make them whiter. Uh, tooth bonding, which is a, a tooth-colored filling material to fix things. Um, and also, uh, you know what's become big, Tom, is braces for adults. Really? We do something called Invisalign, which so you may have heard of. was only kids. I remember in grammar school, you had yeah, three kids in yeah, the class. Yeah, everybody had on. metal mouth yeah. and everything. But today, you can do adults' uh, braces with, uh, with clear brackets mm. and thin wires. Uh, the teeth get moved much more quickly. You also have a product called Invisalign, which is clear retainers which move your teeth. So, um, you know, we, we've treated dozens of adults to make their teeth straight. So maybe that was their only problem. And then you whiten them. So... Again, cosmetics is important because I don't know about you, but I know for me, especially as a dentist, the first thing I notice is somebody's smile. And if you have a, a bad smile, whether you like it or not, the person that's meeting you is going to have a perception of you that may be totally wrong. But perception is reality. That's right. I, because I do this. I'll get on stand. i got a big mouth. We can continue with him. <laughs> but I tell that to people when they go on. I say, you don't understand on a job interview. They'll come in. People want to go on a job interview with a pair of shots and a T-shirt. I says, you can graduate from Harvard. But if you're going to go into that job interview, they're going to look at you. You may not like that idea. You may want them to say, oh, look what's inside of me. Before they see what's inside of you, they look what's outside of you. And I think that's what Stan's saying, that people, you go in and they look at you with a nice smile. I'm sure you've, you've run into a lot of people and a guy, you might have thought he's attractive and stuff, and then he smiled and you saw his teeth were crooked and they were brown, and you may not even know it, but you subliminally, in your mind, said, oh, gee, he's not as attractive as I thought. And it's because his mouth that he yeah. could have had this thing taken care of. You know, a lot of people think you're stuck with what you're born with. In other words, uh, my teeth were crooked, so I'll, I'll die with my teeth crooked. And that's not necessary anymore. One of the nice things that we do, and, and when we talk about this whole boon in cosmetic procedures mm. for our baby boomer population, you know, you can go to a plastic surgeon and do whatever, and I'm not saying that's not a good thing to do. I'm not making any judgments. Mm. But what we do really lasts. So if you straighten your teeth, they're going to stay straight. Right. You, you put veneers on your teeth, they're going to look pretty. So what we do is pretty long-lasting. So, you know, certainly a lot of what we do, for many people, it's, it's expensive. Mm. Uh, teeth whitening, I said, is the exception. But um, it's an investment. And, uh, you know, frankly, in our office, for a lot of people, you know, even with dental insurance, it's expensive to get dental care. Mm. You know, we do a lot of payment plans for people. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it may be something that instead of spending, you know, five grand, you can't do that. It's out of your price range. Or maybe you can spend 250 a month and get it done. Right. So we work oh, with so a lot you of have, people. Oh, that's, that's a good idea for you people out there. So it is true. Something could be expensive. So you have a plan you can work out with them and they could pay you we, monthly we, we or whatever. Work with, yeah, we work with outside finance right. companies that Very are good. strictly in business to finance health care. Wow. Um, there's, so there's obviously a demand for people that want these services that maybe can't afford five, six, seven, eight, ten grand, yet they can get on a, a, a comfortable payment plan and then they get the work done they need to do or they want to do. Mm. Yeah, you see, and this lasts, if you get your teeth done this straight, like you said, this is forever. They'll be that way as long as you take care of them and don't get hit with a baseball or something, <laughs> right? You'll be that way as opposed to Joan Rivers. She's seen her. She's gone in 3,000 times to have her face done, and uh, now she has tomato lips and will you never would. But you see, so this is a different thing. It's really worth it. So, teeth whitening. Someone says, geez, because I know we all look at someone with white teeth. I'm the same way. I don't care what it is. You see someone with white teeth and you remember it, you really do. You say, boy, that looks nice. What's the process and how long does it take? Sure. Um, well, there's, there's actually 
three different techniques we do in our practice, one of which is the simplest one, uh, and it's the least expensive, where we get um, impressions or molds of your teeth, and from those molds, we pour up stone models. And from the stone models, we fabricate uh, custom-fitted thin, thin shells or trays. And we will give you a product to use at home that you'll fill the trays in every night. You can either sleep.